Hello everyone, today let's talk about some examples of finding first partial derivatives. Okay, so here's the first function that we have. Um, we are going to find the first partial derivatives, as you can see that this is plural, so that means we need to find both uh, fx and fy. Okay, so fx is what? fx is the function that we get when we are differentiating f with respect to x, and then we can also write notation this way so partial f and then over partial x okay and then so now what are we going to do so because we're differentiating with respect to the x so we are going to treat x as the variable while we are holding y as a constant okay so what happened is that we focus on differentiating just the square root of x and what is the derivative for square root of x well first we can write it in the form of the x to the one half, okay, and then we still have l1 and y, okay. So now when we take the derivative of x to the one half, that will be easy. So we use the general power rule, so we bring down the one half, and then we are going to get x to the negative one half because we subtract one from the one half. And then you may say, what about the l1 and y? l1 and y, because y is being treated as a constant, and so l1 and y is also a constant. This is a constant multiple of our function x to the one half. So we are going to just leave it there. And so as you can see that this is already the answer. But now if you want to simplify it, then we can just quickly do that. Uh, we have l1 of y, okay? And then in the denominator, we have the two. Then because this x has a negative exponent, so we can move it to the bottom and then convert it back to a square root. So we are going to get square root of x. Okay, so that is our fx. And then the other one is the fy. And so this time we are going to differentiate with respect to y. So we can also write it as partial f over partial y. Okay. And now if you just look at this, this is the function that we are going to focus on okay so what about the x to the one half this time we are treating x to the one half as as a constant multiple for the function so we are just going to copy it and then now we differentiate the l1 and y which is what which is one over y okay and then we are actually finished so we have square root of x because i'm just writing it back as a square root and then we have the y in the denominator Okay, so that's it for this problem. Let's look at another example. Okay, now second example. This time we have a rational function. So we can have a y in the top and then we have x plus y quantity square at the bottom. Okay, and then you may say, what should we do? Uh, first, we are going to think about how to write this or simplify this so that it will be ready for us to take the derivative. We can actually just take the derivative by uh, as is, right? But uh, it probably will be easier if we uh, change this. Instead of having a quotient, we can actually move it to the top and then have a negative exponent, which will give us a um, something that may be nicer, but it's really up to you. So if you want, you can use the quotient rule, okay? So um, let's actually just try to move it up so that we don't need to use the quotient rule. We can use the product rule instead. It depends on which variable that we are differentiating with respect to, okay? So now we have uh, y, and then this one, it will be x plus y to the negative two. Okay, so we are actually ready to differentiate. Okay, so we have fx of xy. Okay, so now we are differentiating with respect to the x. And then you may say, what about the y? We don't really need to use the product rule here because the y is being treated as a constant multiple for this function. So we are just going to copy it first, okay? And then now what happens is that we are going to differentiate this function, which involves the x in there. So we are going to bring down the negative 2, which will give us negative 2 in the front. And then we have x plus y, 2. Okay, so we subtract 1 from this one. So we are going to get negative 2 and then minus 1. Okay, so minus 1. And then that's not finished yet, right? Because we are still having the inner function. And by the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. What is the derivative of the inner function? Because we're differentiating with respect to the x, so the x becomes a 1, and then we have a y here. This time, it's a constant alone, so we are going to get 0 for this. 
Okay, so the x will give us the 1 and then the y will give us the 0 when we differentiate it. And of course, this will just give us what? This is simply just 1, so we don't need to worry about it anymore. And so we can simplify this expression over here. So we are going to get what? Uh, the negative 2 is being put at the top. And then the y is also being put at the top. And then in the denominator, because we have an a to the big small in here, so we can bring it to the bottom. So we get x plus y to the third power because that's negative three. So we have the third power at the bottom. Okay, so now fy. So this time we are differentiating f with respect to y. And this time we actually will need to use the product rule because both functions over here, let's highlight them. So the first one is this one. And then the second one is this one, okay? They both have a y in it, okay? So, they, so because they both have a y in it, so we are going to use the product rule. So first thing is that we are gonna differentiate the first function Okay, so we are going to get what? Differentiate the with respect to y. So we are going to just get um, 1. Okay, so the y becomes a 1. And then we're just going to copy the second function. So we get x plus y to the negative 2. Okay, now what about the next one? And then now plus, okay. And then we copy the first function now, so just y. And then we differentiate the second function. So now differentiate this one with respect to y. So we are going to, just like before, we are going to bring down the negative two. So we have the negative two over here. And then we are going to get what? X plus y. And we don't change the inner function. And now this one, same thing over here. So negative two and then minus one, okay? And then times what? Now times this time, it would be zero plus one because the x will give us zero. When we differentiate the x, we get zero. And then for the y, what happens? We differentiate with respect to y. So we are going to get one. Okay, so as you can see that this will still just be one. So we just need to focus on simplifying this expression here. Uh, let's simplify it. So here we get the negative two in the denominator. So we get one over, what is that? X plus Y to the second power, okay? And then here we get a negative, right? So we get negative and then put the two and the Y at the top. So we get two Y. Then what do we get here? X plus Y. That's negative two minus negative one. So, I mean, negative two, not minus negative one. It's negative two minus one. So we are going to get negative three, which will give us a three here. If you want to simplify, you can uh, do that by getting the common denominator. Then you can, uh, you can, you can combine into a single fraction, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to move on to um, to talk about another example for taking partial derivatives because our main focus right here is not to learn how to simplify those functions using algebra. Okay, so let's look at the next example. In this third example, I want to show you uh, how to find the first partials for a function of three variables. So you can see that w is a function of what? x, y, z, okay? And we do have x, y, z in the expression. And so now that means we are going to get three answers because we are going to differentiate with respect to x, with respect to y, and then also with respect to z, okay? So let's get started. So we are going to have w and then um, take the derivative with respect to the x. And so we are still going to have x, y, z inside the parentheses. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So we have, basically you can have, you can treat this as three functions multiplied together. First one is x, second one is y, and then the third one is e to the y, z. And as you can see that there is no x involved in the second and third function. So we only need to worry about just the x. Actually, let me just rewrite this so that it's easier to see it. So x, we have x and then y and then times e to the y, z. So you can see that those are the three functions that we're looking at. But it just happens that there was only the x in the first function, but there was no x in the second and third function. So we treat this y times e to the y, z as a constant multiple of the x. So we just copy it and then we differentiate the x with respect to the x, which will give us what? Just give us the, the one. Okay, and then what about the other stuff? Just copy. 
And then of course we can simplify it, which will really just give us that simple answer. Okay, so that is for Wx. And then now Wy. Okay, so this time is more work. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. First function can be treated as a constant multiple because there is no y involved in here. There is a y here, there is a y here. Okay, so we gotta use the product rule because the, the two functions have the y involved. Okay, so now we can actually treat this x, y as just one single function if you want to. So we can simply just do, um, we can do this. So let me highlight the functions over here. So we are going to get, so x, y, okay, as one function, and then e to the y, z as the second function. So now we take the derivative of the first function when we are using the product rule. So we are going to get what? Differential respect to y. So that means the y becomes a one and then the x will stay. So we get x and then times one. Okay, so that's that part. And then what about the second function? We just copy. Okay, now next we are going to copy the first function. So just copy x times y. And then now times what? The derivative of e to the yz. So now this time we are going to differentiate this one. The derivative for an exponential function first is that we are just going to just copy that first. And then we multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which is the inner function. So the derivative for the yz with respect to y is that the y becomes a one and then the z is a multiple, right? So we just get the z here. Okay, so uh, this is basically finished, but we should clean up the expression so that it looks better. So we have x times one times this, so x e to the yz. And then plus, this one, multiply them all together, we get x, y, z, e to the y, z. Okay, so w, y is finished. Okay, now w, z. This one is actually easier. It's really because if you just look at the, the three functions over here, right? We can actually erase the highlights right now. There is only the z involved in the third function. So the x and y, you can actually just treat it as a constant multiple. So we're gonna just copy them. And then now differentiate this function, which will give us what, the same thing first. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the yz with respect to z. So the y constant again, right? Constant multiple. And then what about the z? The z becomes a one. So we are just gonna get the y. So the final answer for this one would be x, y squared, because there is a y here, there is another y here. So x, y squared, and then we have e to the y, z. And so we are finished. We're finding the first partials for this function. Okay, let's look at the last example. Last example over here, I just tried to make things more complicated so it looks more complicated over here, but it's actually not too bad, okay? So um, we are going to still have uh, just differential respect to the x and this differential respect to the y. So now we are getting a function of two variables, okay? So first, g sub x of x, y. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Because we're differentiating respect to the x and we have two functions, a product of two functions over here. So let's take a look at this. First one is x squared. Okay. Second one is going to be the whole cosine function, which has an x in it. And so that means we got to use the product rule again. Okay. So now x squared. So we differentiate the x squared, which will give us 2x. And then what about the second function? Just copy. Okay. Continue. We copy the first function. And then now the second function. Now we gotta do it step by step, okay? So times, take the derivative of the outer function first, which will give us the cos, uh, the sine, right? From the cosine, so we get negative sine here. So we need parentheses or brackets. And then we don't change what's inside the function. So make sure that you still just copy, okay? And then now times what? Times, well actually I should be using a different color for this one. So let's start over, so we get negative sine of x, y cubed. Okay, so that's that one. And then now times what? Times the derivative of the inner function. Okay, because we're differentiating respect to the x, so the x becomes a one. And then times what? Times uh, the y cubed. The y cubed is just y cubed. 
because Y is being treated as constant right now. Okay, so we are going to um, simplify this expression here. So we are going to get what? 2x cosine of xy cubed. And then now minus, so we get minus, and then we get x squared, and then we get y cubed. And then we have sine of xy to the third power. Okay, so this gx is finished. Now we do the gy. gy is actually quite easy. It's really because we have what? We don't really have a y in this first function. So we can just leave it, right? So just copy. And then now take the derivative of the cosine, just like what we are doing here. So we are going to get what? We are going to get negative sine of now x, y cubed. This one, we're going to still just copy it, OK? And then now we need to take the derivative of the inner function. But again, x is being held constant. And so we are going to get y, take the derivative of the y cubed, which will give us what? Uh, x and then times 3y squared. And so that's what we are getting. And then, of course, we can clean up this expression so that it will look better. So we get negative. And then x squared times x, we get x cubed. And then there was a 3, actually, I'm missing a 3. So 3x cubed and then y squared. And then we have the sine function. So sine of xy to the third power. Okay, so that's it for all these four examples. I hope that by watching this video, then you actually get the idea of taking partial derivatives. As you can see, that is not even difficult. Actually, it may be easier compared to uh, when you're taking derivatives for single variable functions. Okay, so I will do more examples on calculus 3 next time. See you.